This amazing looking toy is called a molecule. It's like a bunch of atoms making up a molecule. There's 26 balls which spin and rotate around each other. And if we look closely, there's actually nine different colours. The object of this puzzle game is to display one of each colour on each side. It comes in this cool box, a bit like a display case. And reading the back, it says it's a six-sided Sudoku, with a bold infusion of colour. It's kind of like a Sudoku crossed with a Rubik's Cube. And I love Sudokus and Rubik's Cubes, so I think I'm going to enjoy this. Let's try it out. It clicks a little when you turn it, like a ratchet sound, and it feels really cool. Almost like a sensory toy. To start with, I'm mixing them up, and while you're watching the rest of this video, I'm going to try and solve it. I'll come back to it at the end to show you how far I got. Next we're going to take a look at this. It's a Rubik's Orbit. It's made by the people who make the original Rubik's Cube, and it's a medium sort of challenge level. Let's open it up and see what it's like. So it's this cool looking ball. You can see there's bands of colour making up circles. And we can actually slide and rotate these pieces around the centre, like this. You have to make sure they're lined up nice and square, then hold one side and rotate the other. There's three points of rotation. And once it's well and truly mixed up, it's time to try and solve it. So we're trying to make every colour a complete solid ring. It's going to take some thinking about. Using it, it does feel well made. It slides nicely around. And after a minute or two, it looked like I was making a little bit of progress, but I've still got a long way to go. So leave this one with me as well, and we'll see how I get on later. Next I'm going to show you something a bit different. I recently found this lockpick set with 26 pieces. Let's check it out. Opening it up, we get this wallet here, which I assume carries the lockpicks. And underneath, there's four individual cases, each one containing different types of locks and keys. What's great is all the locks are a transparent training lock, so you can see what's happening inside them. This is an example of a barrel lock, which you might find in a door. Test it out with a key, and as you'd expect, it opens it with no problems. And if we look a little bit closer, you can see how it works. As we push the key in, it lifts all the pins up level with the shear line, and that allows us to rotate the cylinder and open the lock. Turn it back down and remove the key. And the springs push the pins back down inside the cylinder, securing it locked again. And we can see exactly the same thing on the other side. So let's see if we can pick it. I always think of this as a really fun kind of puzzle. Open up the wallet and there's a whole array of picking tools and tension bars. Different tools for different applications. To begin with, I'm going to try using these two. We start by putting a tension bar in the bottom of the cylinder and softly applying a little force with our finger. Then use the pick to gently lift each pin up above the shear line. You might need to go back and forth a bit, but once they're all set, you should be able to turn the cylinder. That's got it. Remove the pick and we can use the tension bar to open it. There we go, I've opened the lock. I love trying to do these, I think it's a really cool little puzzle. And what's great is this set comes with four different types of training lock. The manual's quite good as well, it gives you some nice diagrams of how the locks work. But let's have a look at some of the other locks. I opened up this one, and I think this is called a cylinder lock. Again, you can see it working well with the key. It's got the same sort of internals with spring-loaded pins that drop down to lock it. This time I'm going to try using this one, and this. I slid the tension bar into the bottom again and applied a little pressure. Then I slowly worked my way up and down the five pins. And this one did take me a little bit of time, but eventually I did crack it. Now this one is really cool, just a traditional sort of padlock. But it's nice and clear and you can see exactly what's happening. First I'll show you with the key. Yeah, it opens it fine, so let's take a look. You can clearly see the pins moving up and down, and when they're all level with the shear line, I can rotate the cylinder, which draws back the lock bar and opens the shackle. It's pretty straightforward, and I'm going to try and pick it. But this time I'm going to use this sort of rake tool. The idea with this one is we sort of slide it back and forward quickly, and after just a few seconds, you can see I've levelled all six pins. Turn the tension bar, and we open the lock. Pretty quick, huh? I am really impressed with these locks. They do feel good quality, and so do the tools. And they definitely appear to work well. The final one is this interesting lock. And look at the key, it's actually got four sides. Again, you can see nicely inside. There's four sets of three pins. I tried cracking it, but unfortunately this one so far has got the better of me. I haven't been able to open it. But I guess that's the great thing about a puzzle. Keep going until you can master it. Next I want to show you this. It's not really a puzzle, it's actually a DIY build your own memory game kit. Open it up and you can see we've got this sort of old-fashioned TV set, which we can open up and it's full of these electrical components. 
This bag seems to have got a load of wires in and a circuit board. This one's got some large LEDs and buttons. And this bag's got some little fixings in. It comes with this little Haynes instruction manual. It's easy enough to follow and you've got to build your own memory game, so it's a bit like a puzzle. I opened up the components to take a look. Here's the circuit board. It's got four buttons on this side and a number of plug connectors here. There's the battery holder and a load of wires too. To build it, it's quite a cool process. We have to do things like fix on all the coloured buttons. These need to be attached in the right order. They just clip onto the circuit board. We need to attach the LEDs into the plugs on the wires and connect them to the right place on the circuit board. There's also a buzzer and a battery holder that we need to connect. Then we're going to install it all inside the project box. Push the LEDs through the corresponding holes. They're a nice snug fit. Then add the fixings to the circuit board. This bit was a little bit fiddly. Then push it through the holes from the back and use the little screws they supply to fix it in place. Four screws all together. Then install the batteries and it should fire up into life. The buzzer makes a noise and an LED lights up and you need to press the corresponding button. Oh dear, this is where you find out if you've wired it up correctly. And you can see I've wired up the red and the blue the wrong way around and the green and the yellow. So to fix it, I just had to swap some of the plug connectors around. I'm swapping them around on the circuit boards, but you could swap them over at the LEDs. Reinstall the batteries, and I tried it again. Now to test it. And there we go, this time it's working correctly. You've got to remember the sequence of which the LEDs illuminate, and repeat it by pressing the buttons. If you get it correct, it adds one to the sequence. Pretty cool, huh? The sequences can get really long, so how good's your memory? It's a really cool little toy which you get to build yourself. And looking through the manual, you can even adjust the speed and the game level. Right, so how did I get on with the Molecube? Well, after 10 minutes of playing with this, you can see I haven't really got very far. I've just about got one side showing nine separate colours, but to be honest, the rest of it is nowhere really near, and I think it'll take me quite a long time to figure it out. So there's some good longevity to this toy. If you've got one of these and mastered it, you can let me know in the comments. So how did I get on with the Rubik's Orbit? Well, I really enjoyed this one too. After 10 minutes, I didn't crack this one either, but I did make quite good progress. You can see I completed this orange ring, the yellow one's done too, this blue one's got one segment of white, and vice versa, and the green and the red are a bit mixed up too, so I've still got a bit to go. But I'm really enjoying it, it's something a bit different, and I think I'll probably complete this one before I do the Molecube. <laughs> that one seems tough. If you'd like to buy any of these puzzles, there's links in the description. Or you might like to take a look at some of my other videos, like this one all about fidget toys. You can click on the links. Have fun, stay safe, and as always, thanks for watching!